Okay, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well today. Thanks for tuning in. As always, shout out to all the subscribers and big up to anybody new. Gratitude to you. So, Subra Matias signs a multi-fight deal with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing in the UK. This is a great move. I think it's really, really, really good news for Subra Matias. Why? Because there's a lot of fighters at Matchroom at the 140 pound division that are, well, I say it's good news for him. It's not always good news for boxing fans because it promotes more of that in-house stuff. It <laughs> seems like Eddie Hearn has picked up a few tricks from Al Heyman and he's quietly signed a lot of talent in 140 pound and now he's got, you know, basically control of the belt, the IBF belt that Matias has. but. It, at the end of the day, it's really good news overall because we should get some good fights, especially at 140. You've got Matias there now. Obviously, Regis Program, I think, has got one more fight left with Matchroom. But the thing is, is that there's such positivity coming from these fighters about getting paid on time, about... Um, the promoters telling them what the, what's going to happen, and then it happens. You know, Re Regis was very um, vocal about that. He said Hearn was like, you know, promised me this, got me this, wanted a homecoming, got me a big fight, pay per view. You know, so he delivers. At the end of the day, he's been delivering, and obviously he's got um, Devin Haney is over there as well. Then Liam Paro, Australian, and that actually I'll talk about that in a minute. That's another fight that's mentioned between Subro Matias and Liam Paro. So they're not wasting any time. That's supposedly in Puerto Rico in June. Um, I'll touch on that in a minute. But then you have Richardson Hitchens. Okay, he's a matchroom. Jack Cattrall, and that, he's reportedly um, fighting Josh Taylor again. Who I actually am going to pick Jack Cattrall this time to be beat Josh Taylor. I think. Look, he hasn't. Josh Taylor hasn't looked good for how many fights? Seems like, you know, he's he's been pressured into this fight or into the rematch and he's just kind of, look, he's made his money in boxing. But when you have two bad performances in a row, you do wonder where the desire is. And um, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to look at a bit more, some interviews to see where, see if Josh Taylor sounds like he's in the right place. But I feel like there's one or two fighters more at the 140 pound division because that's a good place to start, you know. But Subriel Matias, look, <laughs> well, this guy is an animal. Everybody knows that. This is one of the most fearless, feared fighters in the sport, let alone this division. I mean, he comes to take your soul. <laughs> you know, he really does. He's just fought undefeated fighter after undefeated fighter, walks through fire, breaks the fighters down, beats them up, and he's got, you know, uh, underrated skill set, really. You know, he... he finds his way to his his opponents his feet can be a little bit clumsy but they're also effective because he's able to shut the gap he's got a tremendous amount of heart and he's got a tremendous amount of punching power and he gets so much leverage with these with these arm shots you know he just is able to whip in these very unorthodox shots close range and you know uppercuts and he just breaks uppercuts body shots you know head shots he just breaks his opponents down with vicious like non-stop barrage of punches and like I said he can take what your best shot is which ultimately drains you your energy bar goes down you've still got this guy in front of you who's basically been through some serious stuff in his life do you know what I mean so boxing to him and getting pelted in the face with massive shots is nothing um I love this guy do you know what I mean I love watching him I love his story and I think this is a great signing for him just because it will keep him not that he hasn't been active at all he's been very I mean pretty pretty active I'd, I'd like to see him fight a little bit more but he's had some decent fights but he's probably had a, one of the toughest schedules in boxing do you know what I mean so on to the Liam Paro fight now I'll make a separate video about this when the fight if it gets announced but I think that's an excellent fight rumored for it to be in Puerto Rico shout out to all the Puerto Ricans I know some of you guys tune in much love to you but look that'd be a great idea to see if they can get uh, get some sort of generate some business out there because that's a good fight stylistically against Liam Paro, who's a tough guy, Australian, undefeated again, another undefeated fighter, just coming off a really good, two good wins actually. One against Montana Love and then against Brock Jarvis, his countryman, who wiped him out in one round. But look, Liam Paro's a tough guy. You know, he comes prepared, southpaw, got some decent power, physically strong, and can box. But that's just like, and he comes to win, he's not coming for a paycheck. But So, Subriel Matias, I mean, look, he'll be in another challenging fight but um 
I, I'd favour Matias in that fight. And that, <laughs> it's just a brutal fight for anybody to fight Matias because look, you have to take yourself to a place, a darker place. With even if you beat Matias, let's just say you do beat him, I mean, you, you're not going to come out of that ring like probably you're the same person you are when you went in. That's just how tough this guy is. Um, in terms of Eddie Hearn. Look, he's had a tumultuous few years. You know, he was really, really, really high up with AJ and he brought through Carl Frotch and Kel Brook. And, you know, he really burst on the scene and really took the UK boxing um, sport, box, uh, sport boxing in the UK to a much higher level and single-handedly, really. And you've got to give him credit for that. You know, what he did in the UK was great. But, you know, when you are so high up, it's only inevitable that you do take a bit of a dive. So... But I always thought because I, I just I see a fighting spirit in Eddie Hearn. I know he's you know been raised with a silver spoon, but I still see a fighting spirit in him. He's not somebody that gives up and goes away. Neither is Frank Warren. <laughs> That's why they're both still there today. But he's been quietly. I think he's learnt a lot over his period where he came in a little brash in the U.S. and you know was a bit arrogant and thought he was just going to take over. It hasn't quite worked out. But he stuck to it. He stuck. He stuck to his guns and and you know he he persisted persisted and he's a very persistent man and like I said he's been quietly piecing together the little puzzle or not puzzle but the little the little um I don't know what you call it but he's got the 140 pound division almost on lock there's a few here and there that that are, you know um Gary Antoine Russell who I spoke about Kurt Scooby's one for the future but I'm being a little bit biased but he's a, a, a um Californian, but he lives in Brooklyn and I see him on a weekly basis. He's a great kid and I, I wish him nothing but the best, but he will be in the mix at some point at 140 pounds. But then there are maybe one or two that I can't think of off the top of my head. I made a video about the killers at 140. I'll leave the link up here because I'm forgetting, but there's some good fights. Oh yeah, of course. Tio Ramirez, um, Ver, uh, or, uh, not Virgil Ortiz, Jermaine Ortiz. Not many people want to see him fight now because of the negativity, but these are still good fighters up there, you know. Josh Taylor as well, if he puts on a good performance. So look, it's good, it's good, it's good, good for boxing, and I think this is good for Matias, and I think he'll be getting taken care of, and maybe he can get brought over to the UK and endear himself to the UK fans because. You know they're a, they're fanatic out there, especially with someone that comes to win and get knockouts. I mean, who doesn't love that, you know? So, anyway, more on the the Matias Paro matchup. When if that does get announced, I'll do a, a deeper breakdown because I want to really look and study Paro a bit deep deeper because I know Matias quite well, but I haven't watched too much of Paro. I've seen the fights. Don't get me wrong, but not as like you know studying. Sometimes I just want to chill and end, get entertained but i'll really watch it but shout out to all the australians locked in as well i just made a documentary or like a, a like father like son tim zoo and his dad costa zoo i'll leave the link up here check that out i've got more videos on the way hope you guys have a great week i am out of here peace and love boxing on the edge